We have uh, some uh, information about uh, the very uh, prominent in the vegan community, Rin Berry, who was an American author on vegetarianism and veganism, as well as a pioneer in the animal rights and vegan movements. Uh, we'll tell you more about him as the program goes on. Uh, Jeff has a, uh, a memoriam. I'm here to honor a uh, good friend, Rin, and to show love to Christina. Thank you very much. Chris, Chris. Hi, my name is, is Chris. Um, um, I was a, a close friend of Rin Berry. We put together the Vegan Guide to New York City. And through Rin, I met uh, Jeff Tucker in uh, Homestead. That's when I found and Jeff was courageous enough to dive into the freezing pool. And I just watched him and said, oh, not my day today. So I'm like here to honor Rain Barry. Yes. And, um, and uh, to hear what everybody uh, wants to share about veganism. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. We look forward to uh, hearing anything else you want to share later on. And uh, a quick question for Jeff, vegan man. How could you be in a freezing pool in Homestead, Florida? I don't know what time of year. <laughs> you don't know? I re I re it was so long ago. They came down around 2005, 2007. What, what yeah. was it, Chris? Yeah. Well, it does get cold here, but not freezing, you know? I think you misheard that. He said he was homeless and shooting pool. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you. Hi, I'm Saurabh Dalal. And, uh, you know, I want to thank Christina for sending this invitation uh, to join this great event. And um, being Rin's birthday, Rinberry's birthday, and a celebration and tribute of his life, I thought it would join. So, uh Anyway, thank you guys in uh, Miami, I guess, for organizing this. And uh, I actually did know some people from Miami or say many, many years back. Um, but anyway, I'm in the Washington, D.C. area. I'm in Maryland and uh, been friends with uh, Rinberry probably since uh, the early 90s. And also I spent a fair amount of time in Brooklyn. And so I got to know Rin and Christina Will and uh, yeah, been involved in a number of organizations. And so anyway, just... Uh, Thank you for hosting this event and, and glad to be a part of it. Thank and you. again, your name is? Yeah, my name is Saurabh Dalal and Saurabh. I'm from uh, Maryland and I spent a lot of time in New York City as well. Uh, Not deep. Is it, is it snowing place. already in Washington? It sure is. We have about uh, on the ground about three or four inches and Ooh. I just got <laughs> done, you know, clearing it out as much as possible. And so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, Deepin, any, any good luck with the uh, audio? I hope so. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yep. And see you. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so, Stu, I, you had my name correct. It is Deepin. Someone else uh, mentioned it earlier. I think it was uh, Chris. I may have mentioned it. Yes, yeah, yeah, she did. Yeah. Um, I've known Christina and um, through Rin. Uh, actually met them at the same time in New York City and uh, had pleasure of enjoying their company. I uh, haven't seen Christina for a year now, maybe more because of the pandemic. But uh, um, like Saurabh mentioned about the snow, um, we're awaiting that up here uh, in New Jersey, New York. Um, and I've been a lifelong vegetarian and a vegan for now 10 years. Uh, wow. My first time with this group. Um, so I'll be here short. Unfortunately, there's dinner time at 7.15. So. Uh, but I uh, wanted to wish Rin a happy birthday uh, and I hope he is, um, you know, enjoying himself with all the animals and uh, whatever he loves to do wherever, you know, in heaven. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight, Deepin. <clears throat> it is with a heavy heart that, that we make this uh, a feature of tonight's, <clears throat> of tonight's dinner. Uh, Odd luck. And um, I want to acknowledge the fact that we have a number of special guests who are here for that reason. 
um, they're always welcome to come back. And um, but I, I want to get right into uh, <clears throat> into Rin, Rin Berry. Behind me, over there, uh, there is is a picture of Rin. Can you all see that? Um, that happened to be something I held up when Estelle and I did a presentation. It was, it was the, the, the most important presentation of my life. Um, maybe Estella would agree that it was hard to, but we were invited to uh, the International Vegetarian Union Veg Fest down in Buenos Aires four years ago. And um, as part of my presentation, um, I, <clears throat> I booked a, uh, an actress by the name of Estella. And um, I booked an actor that was recommended by Rin Berry, highly recommended by Rin Berry to play a particular role, which is of course, um, in the Mona Lisa, the Mona Lisa smile, who would that be? Who would the male lead be? I'm giving some clues out here. Leonardo. Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah. Now, don't don't get me wrong. Don't think that Brinberry was just a playwright who dabbled um, in his last couple of years um, with some and created some one act plays. Um, that is certainly not the, the main breadth and depth of his work for global vegans. But <clears throat> it is the one that was sexy to us and it caught on. But um, I think after I finish what I have to present to you all, that maybe Dee Penn and, and Chris and others will, will share other aspects of Rin's life. But if you don't mind, I'll sort of carry the ball for a while since um, it's, it can, I want it, the format, I want it to flow and I want to get a lot of, a lot of information to you all about Rin in the short time. So um, I have known Rin for, for quite a few years, like two decades or so, um, two and a half decades. And uh, I think we heard about his, his record of accomplishments as a writer, historian, um, and he's written some of the major uh, academic works on vegan religion, uh, veganism in historical perspective. He's chronicled the lives of many great vegans and there are many, but uh, I'm, I'll sort of focus on the six plays that deal with uh, Tolstoy, that deal with Dr. Kellogg, uh, the guy um, who invented cornflakes um, <clears throat> and Pythagoras and um, of course the Vin Leonardo da Vinci and a few other notables, Buddha. So Rin turns his hand to writing these short scripts um, and Estelle and I picked, picked up on that. The first time that Rin presented his playwright persona at the, um, the big annual gathering in Pennsylvania uh, with the um, North American NAVS. Many of you may have been there at one time or another. This is one of the biggest vegan conferences in the world, certainly in the United States. And <clears throat> one, one year, Rin says, 
come into my room. Everybody had rooms for the presenters. And he was going to debut a play that he wrote. And he handed out the scripts. And a tall gentleman picked up the, the script and said, let me play the part of Leonardo da Vinci. And um, the, other, the other parts were taken, all volunteers. And the room read the play, enjoyed it. And afterwards, we commented that the guy who played Leonardo da Vinci was like too damn good, you know? He was like, he was like not a volunteer sitting in the room. He was like a professional actor. And so it turns out that he was. He was actually a voice coach from Hollywood who just happened to be in the room or maybe, maybe it was planned. And he read the part of Leonardo with like preci precise and imaginative phrasing mm -hmm. and diction. What's that? Um... Okay. Could somebody, Arlen, could you unmute? Could you mute? Let me just, thank you, thank you. Anyway, getting back to the story, um, we were all very impressed by the play. And the next year, um, we were kind of hoping that that guy would show up to play Leonardo again, but he didn't. So I stuck my hand up and, and I, uh, I took the part. And yeah, you know, I, had, I had some theater background, uh, but, but in any case, I became Rin's favorite Leonardo. Now, I, wanted, I don't want to get it wrong. I don't want you to think that this play was done you know, all over the world and, and got all kinds of reviews. It, it, was, it was a very well-kept secret, only if the play was just getting out there. And a couple of years later, we invited Rin to come down to Tamarack, Florida for our big monthly vegan dinner, which Linda and Stu, Stu was the host over there. Uh, Kathy always had a presentation over there. And so that night we made Rin the master of ceremonies. I brought in some real actors and we had volunteers and we did several of his plays. Really, it was a great tribute to Rin, you know, to kind of announce his role as a playwright in the vegan movement, not just the historian and so on. Now, what really makes this kind of not just news is the fact that that was in October slash November. And when we finished that weekend, we did, we did that twice with Rin. He was the host and he was the um, master of ceremonies. And we kind of made him the director of the whole event. And he would bring out and introduce his plays and we would do them. Well, that was October, November. As Chris would probably know with some accuracy, about three months later, we got bad news. We got really bad news that, uh, that Rin had, had, um, he had collapsed running in Central Park. And he was a runner, a swimmer. Um, he was running in Central Park, collapsed, was it a stroke or a heart attack, Chris? Chris will tell us later, but Rin was picked up in Central Park, brought to a hospital, was unidentified for some days, and he passed in that hospital. Um, in other words, a few months after he had come down to Florida, stayed at my house, you know, 
done his um, debut kind of as a, as a playwright. So I was very touched by that. And um, I, I promised that I was going to, to do his plays whenever I could. And, you know, um, and, and Estella felt the same way. Um, we made Rin, I, do you have the graphics too of, of the, the donor 365? We made Rin the honorary, um, kind of the honorary person of our organization called Friends of Vegetastic Art. And we have Friends of Vegetastic Art, a meetup group. We have, um, we've done many performances. We have a webpage documenting all of that. Um, and so Rin is the, the cover, the cover boy, the cover figure of that, of that organization. Um, I'm looking at a picture of it. If Stu, you don't have it, we won't see it. That's okay. Um, I'll put in some of these links uh, so that you can look at these pages later on um, and follow that. But, but um, getting back to Rin, um, I'd, like to, I'd like to run this little clip and I'll keep it short. I don't want to make it the whole play. I just want to run um, to give you a feeling of what this picture behind me represents. Hombre era Rin Barry, era uno de los líderes intelectuales y autores en el, en el movimiento contemporáneo vegano. Escribió libros como así de grandes, fantásticos. Disculpame, él murió hace unos años, Rin Barry falleció. Pero queremos, Stella, por favor, puedes subir. Queremos hacer algún extracto de su obra que se llama La sonrisa de Mona Lisa. Por favor, esperen. Esta es mi compañera Stella Wing Walker. Pueden haberla visto hoy, hace dos días. Y también esta tarde. Va a ser una presentación distinta para niños y familias. Pero vamos a hacer esta obra bien corta de un gran vegano llamado Leonardo da Vinci. Tenemos que tener esto y hacer esto, pero bueno. Vamos a intentar hacerlo para ustedes. Mona Lisa es ella, Leonardo da Vinci es ella. Sostener esta sonrisa. Quiero captar su dulzura misteriosa. Tú me evocas esta sonrisa, Leo. Cuando te hablo, estoy fascinada por todas tus actividades tan distintas. Eh, me gusta mantenerme ocupado. Era Aristóteles que dijo, la energía es el principio regente de la vida. No, no, no sos más que energético. Escuché que hiciste un disfraz de murciélago y te tiraste del techo de Casavecchio. ¿Es verdad? Sí, sí. Estaba probando si se podía sostener esas alas maravillosas en el aire. Quería volar arriba de la tierra y ser libre de esta, esta tierra. We are going to read a play by Rin Berry, who wrote a series of incredible one-act plays about famous vegans. This one is entitled John Cornflakes Kellogg. And the scene is a doctor's consulting room at the Battle Creek Sanitarium in the early 20th century. That would be a hundred years ago. 
a slightly hypochondriac patient named Mary is imploring Dr. John Kellogg, the greatest abdominal surgeon of his time, to operate on her. But Kellogg, unlike modern medicine or med medical doctors, views surgery as a last resort. He actually tries to talk her out of it. And here we go, drama. All the doctors have told me that I have gastroenteritis. Since you are the world's foremost abdominal surgeon, I like you to operate. Before I operate, I want you to try changing your diet for a week. If the symptoms persist after 10 days, then I will perform the surgery. I repose all my confidence in you. I know that in all your years as a gastric surgeon, you've never had a mortality. To what do you attribute your unequal record? I attribute it to the fact that I put my patients on a vegetarian diet before each surgery, which often obviates the need for surgery. And then I take the precaution of washing my hands before each operation, something that many other surgeons neglect to do. Well, well, I would much prefer to try your vegetarian diet. I see that I am in good company. Isn't that Henry Ford, the model car manufacturer, and Montgomery Ward, the department store magnate over there? What will breakfast be like? My patients normally start the day with fresh fruit and a bowl of flaked cereal, such as <coughs> Kellogg's Corn Flakes. And Solarium sunbathing in the noon. Oh. Oh. Will the men be present while I'm sunbathing in the noon? Don't worry, Mary. We have segregated facilities. The patients attend lectures on vegetarian nutrition, and of course, they have two vegetarian meals a day in the sand dining room. I'm a three meal a day person. We overeat in this country. There's nothing sacrosanct about three meals a day. Our ancestors who were sturdier and healthier than we are took two meals a day. That's the program we follow. Well, <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Shri. Um, thank you for uh, indulging us and uh, letting us share some snippets of uh, the theatrical side of, of Rin. Uh, Chris, if you don't mind, I'll continue kind of leading the memoriam, or would you like to step in and, um, you know, request people to share memories of Rin? I'm, I'm thinking that I'd like to hand the mic to Deepen and to Sarab, uh, and, 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 and of course, um, Arlen and, and yourself. And why don't we have you four begin a more in-depth look at Rin and, and, and you know, share your feelings uh, about him. Is that okay, Chris? Okay. Yes, sure. What, can we start with you then? And then you can hand it to uh, one of the others that I mentioned. And then after those, maybe other people 
who are not here specifically for RINs will, will want to add something. So please. Yeah, sure. So Ren, um, I met Ren in 1991. And uh, when he used to go to the Green Market Union Square, because he liked to meet the, uh, his uh, readers, people who bought his books and talk to them about it and, and hear what they wanted to share. And um, I met uh, Arlen, Sarab, and Dipin through Ren. And when uh, uh, he was uh, uh, part of the vegan guide that already existed, but the the, the uh, original authors they the um, they decided they didn't want to uh, have part in it anymore, so they uh, left for Ren to take over. And then Ren invited me. Why don't you? Uh, why don't we uh, put up the vegan guide together? So he did, of course, he did the hundred percent of the work. I was just, uh, I'll just help him uh, review the restaurants and taste the foods and and um, and I just wanted to share when he he decided to uh, write his write the short plays when because Rin was a public speaker and we decided why don't we take an, a, 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 a course on acting for beginners and so okay that's a good idea then when the teachers uh, said each one of you you're gonna choose a play and then you perform it towards the end so then Rin decided why don't I write my own plays so that's when he decided to write Leonardo da Vinci. All his plays are based on his his uh, books, his works, and famous vegetarians and uh, food for the gods, vegetarianism in the world's religion. So he, um, that's how the play started. And he had one that wasn't published that he was ready to publish the next year uh, 2014, he passed in 2013, which was a, a Portuguese doctor because he visited Portugal, he, he gave talks, he performed his plays in Portugal, in Brazil, in Canada, and in the U.S. in several places. And then when in Portugal, uh, he, um, he uh, was studying um, um, he was writing a book about that wasn't published about uh, uh, history of raw foods, and uh, so when in Portugal he was doing research and he found out there was a, a Portuguese doctor that uh, went in had connections to Brazilian groups of raw fooders vegan raw fooders in Brazil. And then he wrote that, that play about this uh, vegan raw food Portuguese doctor, but he never, he never published, he never performed. So it's, it's, uh, it's hidden inside one of his computers. So I'll, uh, I'll like to um, hear from Sarab, and Dippin and uh, Arlem. To, I would like for them to share uh, any memories they have, any any funny story, anything that they would like to say. Sarab. Sure. Thank you, Christina. Um, you know, there's just so much to share about Ren and. I met Rin, I know exactly when, it was in 1993, and it was in Portland, Oregon, when we were at a conference together. And Rin, you know, being the, you know, just the scholar that he was, was giving a talk, of course, on the history of vegetarianism. And, you know, we talked, you know, his talk was, uh, 
you know, brilliant, of course, and he's written a number of books, as, as Christina mentioned. And in that talk, he had mentioned something about the Jains, uh, the Jain religion. And I was raised in the Jain religion, of course, being a lifelong vegetarian. And so I had asked him a couple of questions. And then after that, we had a long conversation. And that was immediately the beginning of a beautiful friendship that lasted all the years. And as it turned out, um, I, you know, being from the DC area, but I was working uh, for the city of New York. And so I was actually up there. And then I had heard in late 2013 that, uh, you know, Rin had, as, as Jeff was mentioning, that uh, Rin had collapsed and he was in the hospital. I happened to be only about 10 blocks from that hospital. So I actually went to see Rin while he was, um, you know, not in a conscious state, but uh, still alive. And over the years, we've had many good discussions about, you know, philosophy and various historical figures. And that was kind of a great interest of mine was sort of the history and being an avid vegan for me, that was also very important. And his appreciation of the Jains. And so I felt uh, honored to be able to be there before he passed in those final few days to actually recite some Jain prayers that I knew he, you know, his soul would have responded to. And so I felt uh, very fortunate to be there in the early days of January of 2014 and uh, before Ren passed, but to be able to recite some of the uh, prayers that he also, uh, you know, felt were uh, very powerful. And uh, just a beautiful friendship and a beautiful human being and just did so much great work and all the writings that persist today and, uh, you know, so much that he's done. Uh, I will mention one story, which I think is kind of funny. And, um, you know, Rin was always uh, just promoting all the great reasons to be vegan. That was also my passion. And, uh, in, uh, you know, I'm, in 1997, I organized a um, kind of the first veg fest in DC after many, many years um, of not having a veg fest. There were some in the early, uh, in the 1980s. And so Rin was invited down and a number of other people. And we had another friend who uh, Christina also knows very well is uh, from North Carolina, Dillip Barman. And Dillip was a vegetarian, but he obviously had all the inclinations of being a vegan, he just wasn't. And so Rin and I, I remember at a particular uh, meal, we just kind of looked at Dillip and said, you know, Philip, we predict that you're not only going to be a vegan, but you're going to be an incredible promoter of veganism. And that's going to happen, you know, in the next month. And we talked a lot about this and Dillip sort of laughed and smiled. And sure enough, you know, within a couple of months, he became totally vegan and became a great promoter. This is just one sort of example of how we were joking and saying, you know, you think, you know, that you don't really need to, you're not going to or whatever else, but I believe you are. And we both kind of believed that he was, and he did right away. And so, um, and now we joke to this day that, um, you know, Rin and I helped you become vegan and look at all those people that you've affected now because you've, uh, you know, taken it and really run with it. So um, anyway, just a, a few little things about Rin and um, again, so much to say, but, uh, you know, just um, an incredible human being and just did so much, uh, scholarship and research and speaking to uh, kind of put uh, vegetarianism in a in an important context and everything from the world's religions to historical figures from antiquity all the way to people in the present and so for that I'm really thankful and uh, honored to know Rin and may his atma may his soul be in a peaceful and loving place wherever he is and we know exactly what he's doing wherever he is so uh, you know love you Rin and uh, thank you all for uh, organizing this event. Uh, I don't know, Deepen, uh, anyone who wants to go next? Sure. Um, I first uh, heard about Ren actually through his book, um, The Vegan Guide to New York. Um, I think that's, that's the name of the title, right, Chris? If I'm trying to remember, yeah. Um, and I bought a couple of copies and, you know, enjoyed visiting the restaurants and um, you mentioned then over the years I would see Rin um, and you Chris Tina <laughs> at Union Square um, at some animal rights events 
Uh, but I really got to know you guys um, through Sorab um, in the, um, I remember one time I bought a book and I didn't have money. And he said, okay, you can pay me next time. Uh, and a year had elapsed and I came back uh, and I had given him money uh, exactly at the same uh, spot where he was. And, um, you know, and sort of mentioned, you know, he's Jane, I'm also a drain. And I had told him that, you know, at that point he, he didn't know I was a Jane, but I said, um, my karma, you know, would be attached to yours. And he, he laughed and we laughed together. He's like, yes, you know. Um, and <clears throat> after that, um, you know, spending time, the last memory uh, that I remember very fondly is um, Christina, uh, Ren, Sarab and I, we went to Peacewood Cafe in New York City uh, and we had a wonderful dinner. Uh, we spent close to three hours uh, enjoying ourselves. And um, quite honestly, it's like, I would say, you know, I want to eat something and he would agree and he would say something and we would all agree. So, um, you know, I, 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 that has been my memory uh, because there was such a fun moment uh, of the four of us being there. So, and uh, um, <clears throat> so those are my memories. Uh, and thank you for uh, introducing me, Sarah and Christina, thank you. And unfortunately, I must now leave for dinner, uh, but I wish everyone the best and uh, have a good night. <clears throat>
go into a little deep, a little more depth about the major works that he accomplished. You know, um, I, I often refer to Rin as the guy who writes books this thick, you know. But one of his most uh, important works was the, the revelation that Hitler was not a vegetarian. And, and I, I, I wanted to really press him on that point. I wanted to be da darn, darn sure that he had it right. Of course, you know, he had done the research and I just love, you know, to, to bring up that little historic, historical fact, you know, Hitler was such a propagandist and, you know, he, he would lie about anything if it, if it was to serve his, his, uh, his cause. And so he used to pretend that he was a vegetarian, but Rin actually, Rin actually published the dishes, the favorite dishes of this monster, you know, one of the great monsters one of the great psychopaths in, in human history, Adolf Hitler. And um, he was far from a vegetarian. And obviously he was on the opposite side of the universe when it comes to ahimsa, right? <clears throat> I mean, if there's somebody who is not into ahimsa, it was Hitler. Okay. But, now I want to reveal some things about, about Rin, the playwright, and the, 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 um, the commitment that, that I made to basically um, help his plays get, uh, you know, the, the kind of recognition they deserve. This is a little, this is a troubling anecdote, okay? So as Estelle and I would go around in, in key places and do a reading or do an act out one of Rin's plays, um, we really, we really decided that in his plays, there is something called TMI in a certain way. Does everyone know TMI? Too much information? So you're all muted, so I'll just talk on. So in, in his plays about these pivotal world-class personalities who were vegan, I'll just go over this again. So it's Pythagoras, the Buddha, Count Leo Tolstoy and Kellogg and Da Vinci and so on. One thing that I found problematic, Rin revealed their, their characters, historical characters in a harsh, with a harsh spotlight. So for example, he revealed a lot about Leonardo da Vinci that is not flattering or um, let's say commensurate with promoting veganism through the plays, okay? <clears throat> and so I went back and back to, to Rin's brother who was in charge of his estate. And I asked permission, Chris, as you know, to edit these short plays to make them much more, to make them more appealing because they actually, they, they demonstrate some of the wonderful things about the person's vegan uh, beliefs and vegan philosophy, like let's say Da Vinci, you know, but when, when the play also talks about Da Vinci's um, sexual kind of perversity and the fact that da vinci 
loved animals so much that he hated humans. You know, Leonardo da Vinci was happy to create some of the greatest war machines in the, in the Middle Ages, you know? And he did this because he was, as he said, I kind of hate human beings because they're so cruel. And so to this day, I cannot get permission to edit the plays and therefore we, we're not reading any more of them. I mean, that's a fact. And I hope that the plays carry um, his vegan messages. Um, but for myself, um, I'm not willing to read them word for word. And, and even Estella agrees that we want to edit out some of the historical stuff so that the play can be more entertaining and enjoyable. Um, you know, get the, get the truth and uh, it has a, a bright side and a darker side. Well, that's the darker side. Um, if anybody wants to really learn from a master historian and philosopher, pick up one of the, these big, thick books that Rin wrote um, and sit down with a, a, a lot of food, a big food supply and plan to spend many hours, <laughs> you know, reading, reading, reading. Um, I, if, if it's okay, I would like to conclude this memoriam with a simple moment of silence and then we can move past it and get on with our event. So if you would all just join me in a moment of silent tribute to one of the great vegan philosophers and, and, and writers, Rinderi. 